You know how your media keeps telling you that Russia is getting weaker and running out of weapons? Well, I'm going to be showing you another video. This one is titled Russia's Crazy Surge in Tank Missiles and UAV Pro Production. So when people are saying that Russia is getting weaker and can't produce and they are losing weapons because of the war between Russia and Ukraine, this video is saying, I'm going according to the context of the video, the video is saying that Russia is surging in the production of this. And also I had brought videos previously where we saw Russia was even selling weapons to other countries in Africa, Mali, Guinea. I'm not speculating right now. I brought the video to the channel. So yeah, let's see what weapons Russia is producing while people are saying they are getting weaker. A lot of tanks. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine has led both Russia and Ukraine to continuously utilize their military technology in order to maintain their respective positions. While Ukraine receives military assistance from its allies, Russia, despite facing heavy Western sanctions on its military industrial complex, has managed to effectively produce a substantial number of crucial weapon systems. In 2023, the Russian military experienced a significant boost in its arsenal, acquiring over 1,500 tanks, 1,400 rocket and artillery vehicles, and more than 22,000 unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as UAVs. This raises a compelling question. How does Russia manage to sustain such elevated production levels of military assets in the face of formidable Western sanctions? Keep on watching to discover the answer to this question. As I've also been told that the cost of production of this equipment is a lot cheaper compared to the numbers we see and hear on the US media of, you know, the weapons America is providing to Ukraine. So they said, or somebody in the comment section, is in my comment somewhere, I'm paraphrasing, but he said that Russia spends less money and produces more compared to what, you know, these other countries are spending to produce less. Let me know what you think about that. I'm not saying that is the truth. Just consider it speculative, but let me know what you think. Led by the United States and its allies, the West has primarily directed sanctions at Russia's military industrial complex, or MIC, in response to its military intervention in Ukraine in February 2022. These sanctions include export control restrictions on crucial Western originating technologies and dual use components. The impact on Russia's MIC has been significant, presenting challenges in replacing damaged equipment and causing a shortage of high-end electronic components. This in turn has halted or slowed down the production of specific weapon systems. Russia heavily depends on essential imports from Western countries for components vital to high-grade weaponry such as main battle tanks, aircraft, and missiles. However, the sanctions and export controls have restricted Russia's access to these crucial components, impacting its ability to advance its military technology. The scarcity of top-notch foreign components has forced Moscow to resort to inferior alternatives, detrimentally affecting the quality of Russia's weaponry and technology. Moreover, the sanctions have placed constraints on Russia's ability to replace damaged military equipment and fund its campaign, hampering its overall capacity to develop, maintain, and deploy cutting-edge weapons and technology on the Ukrainian battlefield. Russia is no stranger to Western sanctions, having previously faced similar measures. In 2014, sanctions were implemented in response to the annexation of Crimea. In an effort to diminish its dependence on Western technology, Russia's MIC proactively addressed the situation by prioritizing import substitution. The establishment of local manufacturing facilities also became a key strategy to produce the required high-quality components. In the context of the Russian sanctions imposed following the 2022 invasion, Russia is finding ways to overcome the shortage by sourcing the required restricted components from countries that have not participated in the sanctions. China, 
Kazakhstan and Turkey play pivotal roles in this endeavor, with China emerging as the primary chip exporter, covering almost 90% of global chip exports between March and December 2022. China? These imports encompass components from China, not Taiwan anymore, and products from renowned U.S. companies like Intel, Advanced Micro Devices, and Texas Instruments. Despite the sanctions aiming to weaken Moscow's military capabilities and impose significant expenses, Russia has successfully circumvented numerous restrictions. Exploiting Western nations' limitations in monitoring and detecting violations, Russia employs various strategies, redirecting crucial imports through third countries like Iran, Central Asia, and the Balkan Peninsula nations. Moreover, by manipulating customs information and utilizing civilian entities to divert items to military companies, Russia has effectively sustained its military production. Honestly, the adaptability of Russia to create this production and this manufacturing in-house is going to make them even a lot more scary because now they have the facility, they have the technology, they have new connections to do this. It's going to make them a lot scarier and a lot stronger. And besides even weapons, they produce a lot more in-house right now, even food. The other time we saw a video of a lady that went to the store and cheese, ham, every single thing was made in Russia, every single thing in the store compared to previously where it would be imported. So they are definitely adapting to these sanctions. And if you ask me, I'm going to say it's beneficial to them because they are becoming self-dependent. Um, and that's something everybody wants, right? As per year-end reports disclosed by the Russian Defense Ministry reported by TASS, Russia has achieved an adequacy level exceeding 84%. This accomplishment encompasses the delivery of more than 1,500 tanks, over 2,200 armored combat vehicles, 1,400 rocket and artillery vehicles, more than 22,000 unmanned aerial vehicles, and over 12,000 automotive vehicles. It does a lot. It is noteworthy that Russia's sustained military production is not solely reliant on support from allies or the exploitation of Western nations' limitations in monitoring sanctions. Rather, Russia's adept responsiveness to the situation plays a pivotal role. They have demonstrated quick adaptability by adjusting supply chains and identifying alternative sources for critical components like optical systems, bearings, machine tools, engines, and microchips. This adaptability allows Russia to persist in producing advanced weapon systems, albeit with components of lower quality. Additionally, Russia's pre-existing stockpiles of older equipment have served as a mitigating factor against the impact of sanctions on its military-industrial complex. These stockpiles act as a buffer, enabling Russia to both maintain and continue producing its military assets. <laughs> the bolstering of Russia's military capabilities through the arrival of these assets has significantly heightened its strength. This influx of military hardware not only equips Russia with a formidable arsenal for the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, but also underscores its commitment to fortifying its military power. In the midst of the conflict, Russia has strategically deployed its newly acquired assets with a noteworthy impact from Iranian-made Shahed-136 Kamikaze drones. The production of Russia's own version, the Jaren-2, specifically tailored to fit Russia's needs, further demonstrates its adaptability. Yeah. The delivery of more than 22,000 UAVs has notably augmented Russia's aerial surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities, enabling precise airstrikes and the gathering of valuable intelligence. On the ground, a diverse array of battle tanks, including the T-62, T-72, T-80, and T-90 models, strategically targets Ukrainian forces, establishing a formidable presence on the battlefield. The addition of over 1,500 tanks and more than 2,200 armored combat vehicles 
has significantly improved Russia's ground forces, enhancing the efficiency of combat operations. Furthermore, the arrival of 1,400 missiles and rocket vehicles has strengthened Russia's ability to strike targets accurately from a distance. This augmented arsenal unquestionably fortifies Russia's military might, establishing a more potent and adaptable force to effectively address the ongoing conflict with Ukraine. In the face of challenges presented by adversaries, Russia has remarkably sustained its military capabilities. Okay, yeah, we can end that one right there. That video was by Defense. I'll put the link to the channel in the description. But they did make um, a lot of points, did make a lot of sense, but I still urge you to consider it speculative until you're able to verify for yourself. These days, I advise you don't believe anything you see on the media, not even on my channel, because uh, it's always good to be sure. First, um, we've seen a lot of videos where, you know, they're saying Russia is weaker now. If we give more money to aid Ukraine, Russia is going to be defeated and the war is going to stop. My point is, I just want the war to stop and people stop dying. That's it. So if you're giving more money and people don't stop dying, you're wasting the money and costing lives. That's how I see it. So yeah, Russia doesn't seem weaker according to this video. But again, feel free to do your research. Um, feel free to talk to us in the comment section. If there's anything you want to add, correct, critique, you know, do so. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.